We are here once again. Once again, bid you greetings, dear humans. Moin. <laughs> we shall now move into the second part, what you call Q&A. Are there any more questions that you'd like to ask? Hey, uh, Hello. It's a pleasure to communicate with you like that. Thank you for doing this, for being here. It's been three years for me to have this communication in that way. So, I think for the whole group it would be very interesting, so I'm coming with a big banger for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hit it with all you've got. <laughs> so we did a meditation today, and I'm sure that uh, you know what I'm talking about, since you've been part of the, pro uh, the, the, the process. So you open up the vortex together with the uh, seal. So it would be very interesting if you can take us through what happened from your perspective and maybe you can even elaborate on <clears throat> um, what exactly you were doing in this area maybe in the weeks before or you planning to do in the future and the last thing I had the strong message that there were three ships present. So is there something you can confirm from your perspective or was there something else going on? It is indeed a real banger. <laughs> <laughs> we shall explain. We shall start with your last question first. It's the easiest to answer. Yes, you were correct. There were three craft in the general direction of indeed what you suspected were the blue stones, the blue crystals. The crystals are always placed very intentionally. These were three, three crafts that, although it was three, it was also one. Yes. They move into unity. And also, they created a field. And as your own counterpart explained in your own channeling, our naturally orientated ship is not yet fully able to manifest in this reality. Therefore, we sent three other ships to create harmonics, create vibration fields, magnetics as well, to create a frequency that would be would allow it easily to operate on your planets in this area. 
And that is also what we have been doing in, in this area. As you know, we've been building up this energy for quite some time, which we felt is coming. We felt it appropriate. We tuned in that sense with your trees and with the mountains around it. To create easier communications, create harmony within the area. So to so aid you as well to make it a bit easier for you to up your energy to connect with us it's also we were there to interface with your elements they're present you has if you have felt we were our consciousness was in the wind and this has allowed us to do this the planet has allowed us to do this it's required also some tuning beforehand because your the frequency of your planet it's very different from that of our own. So the way your elements work, our elements work, it's different. So we needed to tune ourselves, learn that way to communicate with that, that aspect of your planet. To answer your question about the vortex, it is the way we taught the channel to communicate with us through energy work. Uh, it is, in a sense, permission slip for you to have your bodies more easily tuned to a frequency. As we said, the stones are placed very intentionally by the channel. We always make known to him in, in via his intuition, if you will, where he needs to place the stones, which stones to bring, which crystals to bring, how to place them, which pattern, which energy to use. And which way the ritual needs to go differ, uh, differs every time how it goes, which stones are used. The purpose for this, as we said, it was to make it easier for you to communicate with us, but also to create cohesion, connection between 
all of you. This was also the intention, the meditation that the channel gave. He, we, we communicated with him that if you wanted to, he could, he would find joy in it to think about ways to connect each and every one of you. It's part of, of his excitement to, to understand how minds can co connect and can work together in cohesion and create bigger effects in energy than one would do alone. He is very attuned and aware of this idea. Um, and so we provided him with the opportunity to do this. And we directed him through playful interaction to certain mantras. And then he found the mantra that meditation the mantra that we review all did together. And its meaning is, is in itself very beautiful, very affirmative in who you are. This, as you know, maybe the first word, poem, it is this first beginning of the universe. It is known in your culture. This has this frequency to it, this beingness. And then the second word, sat, which means formless. And the third word, chit. can be translated as connection to the universe, the creator within. And the fourth word, Ananda, which is the Sanskrit word for pure love, pure bliss. It means unconditional love. Last word, the first line by Abrahama, you know the divine creator, supreme creator is said in Hindi. And this all, the rest of the lines, this all beautifully tied together what in essence you are what you, through this mantra, invoke within yourself, which allows you to go, if you wish, to go inside yourself, experience this, to connect with those aspects which are within you, to be formless, to be the creator, to simply be, to be pure love, to be unconditional love, to connect with the Supreme Creator, to connect with the Divine Feminine, 
the fine masculine together as one. Does this answer your bangers of a question? Yes. Um, so, um, I, I have a way better idea now how to uh, create contact with you, with the group. And I'm sure it's not that easy since I thought the chips were pretty, uh, yeah, if they really would have been becoming visible and there were so many other people there, I think it's impossible. <laughs> so, but if it would be more remote and uh, I think we built the energy up quite well, but I think it, it takes some more, but it's nice to know that Take it yeah. easy. Yeah, yeah. You set yourself and it will reflect it back to you. You said it's not easy, it's not impossible. If that is what you think, it's what you want to believe. And yes, that it is. That other people saw it or were there. It was okay, it could be. Because, as we said, you, you tune your body to a frequency. And our frequency and your frequency, at a certain point, interlock. And then, whatever communication is there, whatever connection is there, whatever then can happen, happen, which also means seeing our ships. This in very practical terms means that if you are standing there fully tuned to our frequency or very close to it, to a degree where you would be able to see our ships, <coughs> then you would see our ships, but the other people that were not part of it, they would see nothing, because their bodies are not attuned to it. That is how simple, how it simply works. That is how simple it can be. And I'm also getting the idea. So if we see, if we see a light, and we would go to other people and be like, "Do you see the light?" It would disappear most probably for both of them. That is what you wish. <laughs> Again, if you go to the person and you go to that person and you say, there is a great light there. Where, where, where? I do not see it. And then you would look and say, you would point right there. And then maybe it would disappear for you then that means you have tuned out of it. Which is fine, if that is what you choose to believe. If what you choose, is the, if that is what you decide. You can also say, no, my belief is firm. My decision is firm. I will stay tuned to this, to this frequency. I will stay tuned. Stay tuned. It's like a radio. Stay tuned for more news. Stay tuned for more Yael. If that is what you desire, if that is what you wish, then you can do so. And if the person next to you stands there and sees nothing, Maybe he calls you crazy. Maybe you are. Maybe he is. Again, it all depends on your perspective of things. 
as we said, you think you're a little bit silly with your politics and your religion. So, but that's fine. We love you anyway, unconditionally. You can do that in that moment as well to the person. Okay, you cannot see that, it's fine. It is your truth. Love you unconditionally, regardless. And you can enjoy the view. Alone, if you will. But you're not alone. We are all together. Does this help you? You want to dive more deeper into this? Well, I would, but um, other people pay a lot of money to me. <laughs> 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 I will give them the, the oh, opportunity well. to uh, <laughs> Oh, well, all right then. But Maybe. Thank you, thank you a lot, really. It helped me a lot. Maybe in another moment, if you will. <laughs> but maybe Alex here speaking. Hello, Alex. Um, we could elaborate a little bit on the idea because Simon asked you if the other person would not perceive the ship and he tells the other person about it, what then would happen. And then you and others as Asani describe how reality is working, about reality bubbles, about co-creation, about perceiving other people just as reflections of yourself. So I'm just wondering if Simon would ask the other person if he sees the ship, wouldn't that other person also be just a reflection uh, co-creation of course with the other person but in a sense just a reflection of himself and his own beliefs and then as you told it, if he would expect the other person to insist no I cannot see something then probably the ship also would disappear for him is it the way how it works or how it is can creating these reality bubbles and co-creating with different people is this working in a different way? It depends on the situation on which energies are more dominant than said before. A co-creation there in that moment. But between who and what? Other persons are indeed reflections of yourself. So if in this instance, in this scenario, Simon would go up to someone and say, look, I see those lights, aren't they beautiful? Aren't they cool? And the other one would not perceive it. That would indeed be a reflection somewhere within Simon. That he somewhere has to believe in him that it is not visible or not possible. But in that moment, Simon, the choice is up to Simon to go with the reflection of the person of the co-creation, the person that is not seeing the lights, or he goes with the decision it's the seeing of the lights, the co-creation, where he already saw the lights. And then in this moment, if he chooses the first, yes, the lights will disappear. 
because then he has chosen the frequency he wants to tune into. And that is not our frequency, so he will not see those lights anymore. He will just simply phase out if he chooses the other one. Then he will continue to see it, even though the other person, the reflection, that remains the same, it remains there. And then the choice for Simon is just simply, you believe it, thank the reflection for its reflection, for its purpose, send it love, and let it go. And then the person will go, it will go somewhere else, or you will just keep standing there, gazing into nothing, maybe somewhere thinking, hmm. Is there really something there? Maybe the curiosity speaks, maybe not. It's all about that person. If he or she is willing to allow that and is open to it. Does this help? Yes, of course. And maybe another question. Well, all right. Then. Um, so <laughs> just because, almost, just this point. Almost everything in this process of this creation happens unconsciously in our subconscious mind. For you, it does. Yeah. For for us, right? So, how can we change this to become more conscious about it and to get more in power of consciously participating in this creation process. It is all about love. As we've said before, the answer to many questions, you might see a team developing here, the answer is mostly the same. Follow your eyes, excitement, follow your eyes, joy, to the best of your ability, without any insistence on what the outcome ought to be. At that point, you will automatically, this is how the system works, how the mechanism works, you will automatically turn within become your true self and your true self already is more aware is fully aware and it gives you the choice so tune within so we have started this channeling tune to the heart frequency tune within very deep within Stay there, get to know, make it part of yourself, make it easy. This is something that also our partner, the channel, is very insistent on that we share. Because it has always been funny to him, this thing, as we said. In the first Q&A, to the question of Angelina, what she, what we find so interesting about human civilization. One of the other main things of human civilization we find so interesting and funny is that you meditate and you have, or you have certain days in the week that you meditate or you would do prayer and you only do it then you open yourself up to the source, to the creator, to yourself, to your within you go within, you go very deep you go very deep within you open that door and you go deep within and then when the moment is over you come back and you shut the door <laughs> Why do you shut the door? It's not drafty. 
It's not windy. <laughs> Maybe a little bit windy, but a warm wind, full of love and joy. So why do you keep this door closed? It's because of the limitations we choose, indeed. Choose because an other can be the one or the other. Not yes, it can. No, it cannot. <laughs> it cannot. And yet, at the same time, it can. You can play around with this. Because you can use your emotions for this. This is what your emotions are. Emotions. E-mail. Emotions. Energy in motion. Your emotions will tell you whenever you are in alignment with your true self or not. When you are fully in alignment with your true self, you know how it will feel like. You will be in pure bliss, pure at peace, pure in love, completely unconditionally. When you're not, you might feel a little bit less so, you might get angry, you might find shame in something, you might be fearful of something. This is not being in tune with yourself, but this is your emotions that telling you, wake up, hello, pay attention. You're not in alignment with who you are. This is not who you truly are. If you choose, to be that and be in this alignment very well. Feel a little bit less happy. But it tells you right, right now, with a filter. I believe something that is somehow Pulling me, turning me away from my true self. So what in that moment can you then do? I can ask myself why do I feel so? Exactly. This is one way. You can just also simply sit. As we said, not everything needs an explanation. You can simply sit and be there, let it be for a little bit while, then ease it up, send it love, just go back within, ease yourself into it, make it easy, just go and ease yourself, just sit down, ease yourself. <laughs> Maybe take a nap. Maybe just sit. Do something pleasant. Just to take the edge up. And you go back with him. Back to your fullest joy. Your highest excitement. In that moment. Just being pure, blissed out, as they say. And fully in love, in tune, who you are, truly, with your heart. Of course, we understand this is not an easy process, although it can be if you want it to be. It's all what you wish. You can train this, you can repeat it. Does this answer your question? Very well, thank you. Very welcome. We enjoy this question and answer tremendously. Shall we do several more? 
do you feel about it? Uh, yes. Hi, this is Christian. Hello, Christian. Uh, I have another question, um, maybe relating to this uh, one before. Um, what what uh, I took um, from these interviews and others um, as well is that um, we, as we incarnate in this life, we have some certain goals and also some limitations, as we just discussed right now. Um, what um, part of that is actually changeable by manifestation and um, um, orientation, as we just discussed, and what is limited or, or is basically everything in total changeable? Could you repeat the question a little bit more slowly? The channel has problems digesting what you said. Sure. So, um, as we incarnate in this life, we have some goals and also probably some limitations we choose before we incarnate. And my question is, um, as we are able to switch and change certain things as we discussed right now through manifesting uh, my question is what part can we basically change and what not or is everything basically changeable everything that you desire is changeable yes it's just a matter of how much do we want to go within how much do you want to choose what do you want to choose? How much control do you wish over your life by surrendering it all to your highest joy, your highest excitement? Yes, it's true, you come in this life with a certain set of goals, a certain set of things that happen, you want to have happen. This is usually, almost always, actually always, is or that larger part of yourself that as you wish has a broader view of things stands in a mountain for example or as in the ego mechanism that is the persona self who you are who you identify as who you are is less aware so and so the higher self that the larger part of you will guide you but also will see what lessons might be of benefit to you what goals might be of benefit to you and things that to achieve also some things are in, as you said as is a soul contract contract, predetermined co-creation that you have agreed to because for some reason uh, the higher self has decided that it is of benefit to you and it is all to aid you into turning inward to learn, understand yourself yourself and your emotions. I'll give you a good example of the channel he is allowing us to share this from him. The channel has had, you would not say it, you would not believe it. If you now saw him and you've met him, the channel has had a very rough childhood. There was a lot of violence, both physically and mentally, a lot of abuse, a lot of misunderstanding by the other people around him, because he is different. As well, he had parents that had very limiting belief systems. The 
question would be, if you are the same mind, why and on earth or beyond would you choose such a youth in such teenage years? Why would you do that? Now the larger part of you and the larger part of the channel he knew very much so that it would bring the channel more into himself. It were events, it were happenings, emotions, triggers for him that when he was old enough to decide for himself who he wanted to be, that he sat down with himself and said, this is not who I want to be, who must I then be, who do I desire to be? He asked this question within and the answer he was given was whoever you choose to be. The choice is yours. And this was for the channel an eye-opening revelation. You can choose who you are. Your past doesn't define you. It aids you. It defines the channel in the way that he has had that contrasting experience and he knows what he does not want. He knows what he prefers. He knows what he wants. He knows what is more in alignment with his true self. And this was a choice made by the channels of yourself to incarnate with this family, with these parents, to very quickly, in your terms of linear time, have a lot of contrast happen in his life. So that very quickly, in a very early age, a very early age, in his mid-twenties, he could come to a very large understanding of his heart, and a very good attunement with his heart, which is funny, if you know his last name. And he did, the higher self did this, so that he did not require 40, 50, 60 years of life periods before he needed to understand these things was compressed down to a lot, what seems a lot, in a very short time span to create this for him. And the channel knows this. And with everything that he has been through, he will tell you if you ask him honestly and genuinely that he does not desire any change whatsoever in his past because it does no longer affect him and it has brought dimensions of love within him that he could not have experienced without the contrast. And therefore, certain goals, they're there to teach you to come within, go within, then you go within, then you are your true natural self, your inner self, and it comes out, as it were, a coming out party. <laughs> And in that way, you then 
to no longer require any goals or things to need happen your karma as you deem it and it's not there because then you will have complete freedom because that is what it means to be truly free to be your true self this is part of your inner being to be free completely love unbounded it's free you can do anything it wants to everything it wants to do you understand do you require more elaboration uh, no thank you very much and also for sharing this personal example um, I have another question um, earlier you just told us that you find some silly things in human society uh, examples like uh, politics <laughs> for example mm. um, do you have something in your life or society as well what would you describe as silly or you would say our connection to you <laughs> <laughs> do we have something silly in our lives in a good way yes we play with it we lie of silliness we like being silly standing on our heads playing games making faces but in a good fun nurtured way but we do not limit ourselves and what we said by silly or funny it just makes us laugh it, burst, it makes us burst out in laughter but it's not the kind that condemns or, or judges as that might be misconstrued as such. No, definitely not. It's just very comical for us. It's very funny to us from our perspective of unlimited love, unconditional love, unbounded love. And those perspectives make limitations seem interesting but also very funny in certain ways certain ways as they are done and it brings us a lot of joy to see that we love but always as you say in good spirit never by never is it meant to put you down to demean human experience because Limitations. This is one of the things that you must understand, all of you. Limitations are not the enemy. They are not something that is bad, that must be conquered, or that must be overcome. It's not a test, as was previously channeled. You're not here sitting in a test room. If you want to go there, do that, we would advise you to go to your institutions called school, go to college, go to the university if you want to test and succeed or fail, whatever you choose. Limitations are not your enemy, they're not bad. This is just a thing that you've chosen to experience limitation in every way possible you have done this for thousands and thousands of years you have created a numerous limitations within your societies and this is always giving you something back it creates contrast for you I ask you then, if you have this contrast, if you know, understand, 
how creation works. Understand that if the one thing is, the opposite is immediately present as the channel answered a question or made a remark earlier this evening. When a question is asked, the answer is immediately there. Immediately. It has this it exists in the same moment the question exists. In this then, if you have contrast, very deep contrast, at the same time, that same level of deepness of contrast of disalignment stands in alignment, stands in love, pure love. It's very deep, very deep. And this is what the limitation experiment or experience is all about, deepening the understanding and the dimensions of love that you can create within. That is what the Creator is doing to itself, which are all of you a part of. To create, to understand itself more deeply in very numerous ways and to deepen that love, that dimension of love, further and further and further. That is what this experience is all about. Deepening that dimension. And you can do that in several ways. And you have chosen to do that by limiting yourself very strongly. We do this by observing you and learning from you. This is what one of the reasons why we are also here. Communicating with you, observing you, learning from you. Because your limitations, going further into that, gives us a sense, a frequency to also then immediately for ourselves see the opposite of that and to deepen our love and our dimension of love and our understanding of love of that unconditionality of the dimension within ourselves that is something that excites us the most about limitation the way it can deepen the dimension of love. So basically all the bad stuff happening right now on earth, all this, be it Corona, be it Black Lives Matter, or what get you, is basically everything of this a good thing because it increases the contrast and increases the rubber band effect. Yeah. Exactly. And it's also the more you move into the light, the stronger darkness will become. The more present, the more conscious you will become of it. You understand that even in our own experience, we are conscious of contrast. Always. It's not that we are all, we're always all in love. Always. We choose that, but we are aware, conscious of the contrast. We just choose not to tune in with it. That is the level of self realization that we have reached. And you are reaching. This is where you go. This is what happens. You move into the light. Your collective consciousness is rising and it's rising. It's going into the direction of love, unconditional love, of a beacon 
of peace and harmony and love. It's going there. It's not a maybe, what if, it's going there. It's going. The train is already moving, it's already left the station. It's already moving. You cannot stop it. You might try to hug it. But you can't stop it. And so this is what happens, it becomes prevalent, becomes, you become aware of it, very strongly aware of it, everything that happens. And it shows you different aspects of your consciousness, of your collective consciousness, of your own experience, your own society. And this allows you to choose now what do you want? Corona in this way shows you what society has been like, how it has been all these years. You've asked time and time again that you want society to change. Well, here is the change. And then there is talk on your news, your media. What to do, not even what to do when the coronavirus will eventually go away. Then we will go back to normal, as you say. Is that what you want? Really? Is that what you want? not what you want and choose it and a lot of people are realizing and waking up to this this fear of this virus has completely shut down your society as it is your world is already different than it was is it not yes. so now you can change it it is changing everybody a lot of you are waking up to this dimension, to this reality that the change that you now wanted, you've wanted for years and years and years, it's now here and now you can change it into what you want. And you all know what you want. You all know what you want, look within. You all know what you want. Do you know why you know what you want? Because for so many years you've experienced that which you did not want. And if you know what you do not want, you know what you do want. Does this help? Does this make any sense to you? Yes. We want to dive deeper, deeper into this. Do we want to answer another question? Are there any more questions? I have a follow-up question. Go right ahead. So I've been triggered a lot uh, in the last yeah, months, and uh, also with all these things that are happening, I see people get triggered. And what can you give us some advice when we are communicating with each other and we get triggered? What can we do to well get the I know. momentum out and, and, and slow it down again? Take a nap. Go so quick. Take a nap. Take a nap. If you're in an argument, you say you're not taking a nap. No, take a nap. The moment you have an argument, the movement, the momentum, already ongoing. If you want to stop the momentum, you should stop it when Preferably, when you see it, you stop it before it starts. Or you stop it 
when it's very little. It's the snowball effect. You make a snowball, you roll it down a mountain. You can easily stop it when it's at the beginning of the mountain, the top of the mountain. It's very easy. Try it when you're standing at the foot of the mountain, however. You might find yourself under a whole heap of snow. If you get triggered by the media, firstly, we would say tune out your media. It doesn't bring you any positive feedback nowadays. Unless you find alignment in this idea of your news with yourself. You feel aligned. This is your highest joy in this moment to turn on the news. And maybe sometimes it is indeed your highest excitement to turn on the news. Just to give yourself a little reminder. This is not what I want. <laughs> Get away. Yeah. Turn but it off. This is what I meant in personal talks with face to face. How can we deal with not making arguments? Then not make the arguments. Ooh, <laughs> and when it's already ongoing. Then stop the argument and walk away. <laughs> Very easy, is it not? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Why not? You will never hear the channel have an argument. Because he knows what it will bring to him. And also sometimes very, very, very little. He has an argument. But even in that moment he understands it was his own creation. He himself, at that moment, found himself, stumbled upon a belief system in himself that was not in alignment with who he really was, with who he really is. Because there is no was, there's only the now. And so, he can only then turn within ask himself the question why what does it bring me to have this argument to put so much so much emotion into this to put so much energy into this why is this so important what does it bring me does it bring me any joy no it doesn't bring me any joy okay well then might just as well stop it is not in line with who I really am. Make this your highest priority in your life. And then an argument, you will just simply stop it. Stop it before it happens. If you find yourself within it, acknowledge I'm in an argument and I created myself. I found, I stumbled upon a belief system within myself that is not in alignment with who I truly am. What is my inner self? And then if you wish, you can keep the belief, you can go on arguing. We will, we will promise you, you will not feel any good. So, then if you want to feel better, then most of you do. And what you can do is stop the argument. Because usually when you're having an argument with somebody else, it's a matter of truth. What is more true? What if I tell you that both are true? But then you might call me crazy, silly, stupid. But both are true. Because truth is not an objective thing, it's subjective, meaning that it is based 
and the perspective that a certain person have and has. The only absolute truth that is there is the unconditional love. It's the basis of all of reality, the basis of who you are, whether you believe it or not. It is there. We all know this. We all feel this. We all share this. And so, but in that sense, both in that argument, both sides are true based on the perspective that they have. Both are true. Even if you would say they're not factually true, that the one has facts of the others does not matter. Perspective of the one and the other are both equally valid. Equally valid. And so respect one another in this. Love each other within this. Because if you do, and you stop the argument, and you acknowledge the argument, you go back within, and you might just find that you stop that, you have gone within. You might reflect to the other person you were in an argument within. Maybe what you're doing is not in alignment with your highest self. Maybe if they then choose to tune in with themselves, they might find this out. And they too might be in coming into alignment with who they are. And then there will be between the two of you no more argument but cooperation. Togetherness. You can do it together. Or the person just simply says, no, that is not true. And then they have chosen not to tune in with who they are and send them love, respect them, wish them well-being and go on your merry way, regardless of who they are, let them go on the merry way. It's not up to you to change another person's beliefs, it's to the person itself. Do you understand? I'm trying. And I, I, I do understand most of what you say. I was just trying to imagine how could I have done things differently. Do not. Um, you, well, you cannot do them differently no, no, now. No, They've course. already happened. But I was trying to. How can I. Um, I'm going to apply what you said. When I'm triggered, then my emotions rush up, and this is really quick. Stop. Okay. Where are you triggered? Um, what is the trigger? Ask yourself first, what is the trigger and why does this trigger me? You already know, there's already the trigger. Okay, so when I give myself the answer, okay. what do you do then? We will go to a trigger of yours. Tell me the trigger. Okay, please. We will go into the, one of your triggers. Tell me a trigger. The one, one of my triggers is um, when I want to elaborate on something, especially in a very close relationship. So when a person is close to me and I want to want to explain something or I want to make a point, and I have I need some time to to build my my well, what I have to say to come to that point. And sometimes I need to think, so I make a little break, and then the other person interrupts me and, and, and takes the talk to some completely different topic. And then I try again, and the same thing happens. And the person takes the, takes the, the talk to a completely different topic, and I get annoyed because I feel not hurt, I don't feel hurt. And this goes on and on, and at the end, I'm really exploding. We have two things for you in this one. Firstly, you get annoyed. This for you is already an indication of the snowball. And here the snowball is still very 
small so you can stop it. So take your foot off the trot, uh, your foot off the gas, as it were. Get out of the argument, or get out of whatever you're trying to explain. This is the second thing. Why are you trying to explain yourself to other people? That was not the thing. I wasn't trying to explain myself. Why are you trying to elaborate anything and then you feel not heard? Must other people hear, hear you? No. It was Must fun interaction at first and then it turned into something that wasn't fun at all. <laughs> Because you get annoyed and you can get angry, maybe even raging and raving and ranting. How they did not hear you and what you're trying to explain, trying to say, trying to interrupt. Because somewhere in your belief system you see being interrupted something rude as being something where you feel not valued mm -hmm. in yourself. You might have the feeling that the person you're elaborating things to does not value you or your time. This is a belief system that's very common in your culture. But I ask you, you're trying to seek validation from another, but do you require validation? Are you not wo inherently worthy? Um, I am. <laughs> but probably there's some, some part of me that doesn't believe that. Because there. otherwise I wouldn't get annoyed. There you go. So that is the why behind your trigger. There is for you a certain part in yourself whatever it is and whatever is causing it that's up for you to find out but that is the why why do you get triggered in that instance because you're trying to seek validation where you will never find it you can only find validation within your true self your inner self there you automatically value automatically worthy because you're unconditionally loved and so now for you neck and homework if you want to understand to ask yourself what is the belief behind this trigger why do I seek validation from other people outside of myself. Why do I do this? It can have many different reasons. It's very easy because we're taught in school by our teachers, by our parents, by our aunts and uncles. You're taught by your society that what another person thinks of you matters, is important, but really it isn't. The situation uh I don't, I'm not sure, I just want to see if, if, it's, if you really got me. I wasn't trying to explain myself or something, I was just trying to make conversation, but I had something specific in my mind and I wanted to talk about something specific and I needed some time to come to that point and I could never reach that point and I got very frustrated about that. Are you done being hard on yourself, perhaps, as well? I must come to this point, and I must come to this point now, or in X amount of time. What, else? what if I take a little bit longer? If the excitement of the other person is not there, why then insist on it? But you can My excitement was was there in the other direction. And sometimes somebody can help, can come with you in that excitement, 
but sometimes they cannot. It's all on the basis of their own highest excitement. It's perfectly valid. You can also ask the person beforehand. I require some time to explain this. Please do not interrupt me sometimes. I may fall silent for a second or two or five or ten or twenty. Because I need to collect my thoughts and see where I am going. This is my process. Can you be compassionate? Can you be helpful and helpful in this? Yes. Be allowing in this. Perhaps they are. Perhaps they are. And it's for you to, to, to decide. However and whatever you want to do with that. Whether it then is a wise decision to move that conversation with that person in that direction or not. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any more questions about this topic? No, about I this instance? Thank you very much. Very welcome. We heard an alarm go off. Yes, that's true. We thank you immensely for this interaction. We have enjoyed it. Thank you. We greet you with unconditional love. We send it to you. We keep you in our hearts. We will. Perhaps, if you allow it, play with you in your dreams. <laughs> Perhaps. Find some triggers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe make a little bit more fun of your politics and of your relations. Deepest love to you, to you, Miss. Our deepest love. Good night, sweet dreams.